Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you once again for how far you have helped us since we started this ceremony. Thank you for what you allowed last week. Thank you for what you allowed yesterday also. We bless your holy name for all your children, the students of this great citadel of learning, on behalf of whom we have gathered to celebrate your faithfulness over their lives. Thank you for granting them the privilege of finishing well. Thank you, Father, for what you want to use them for in our great nation and even beyond the shore of this country. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father, for their lecturers, the management, academic and non-academic staff members. We thank you, Father, for granting all our invited guests joining messages from their different places of assignments. We bless your holy name for what you have started doing today. Accept our heart of gratitude in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, we commit every aspect of this ceremony to your care, and we ask, O oh God, that you will secure all of us, and Father, everything that shall be done, we bring glory to your holy name. And all the students and everyone that shall receive honorary degree as well, Lord, we be for your own glory. Thank you, everlasting Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Federal University of Technology, MENA, Act number 13 of 1986, empowers the university to grant degrees, diplomas, certificates, and other distinctions to persons who have pursued a course of study approved by the university and have satisfied such other requirements as the university may lay down. The university can also grant honorary degrees fellowships of academic titles. I therefore call on the Honorable Chancellor, His Imperial Majesty, Oba Alade Toimbo, Ogunlade Alade Lucy, Odudutu Deji, and Paramount Ruler of Akure Kingdom to constitute this assembly as a convocation held for admission into postgraduate diplomas master's degrees, doctorate degrees, and confirmment of honorary degrees. Chancellor, sir. I declare this assembly open as a convocation of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, constituted for the purpose of confinement of honorary degrees, admission to postgraduate diplomas, and other higher degrees. Chancellor, sir, this assembly, having been duly constituted as a convocation of Federal University of Technology, MENA, for the purpose of confirmment of honorary degrees, admission to postgraduate diplomas, and other higher degrees, I now respectfully call upon you to deliver your address. Chancellor, sir. I welcome our visitor, the President, President Mohamed Buhari, GCFR, to our midst of unfortunate in absentia. I especially welcome our father, the Sultan of Sokoto, 
we say with us this morning. I welcome Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Niger State. You are welcome, sir. The Deputy Governors and other members of the State Executive Council of Niger State. Your Excellency, the former President of Nigeria, Absalam Abubakar, and his amiable wife. You are welcome. The Estud of Nupe and Chairman, Nanja State Council of Traditional Rulers. You are welcome. My own Father, Chief Olufalai. You are welcome. All royal fathers here present, you are welcome. The chairman of council and pro chancellor of this great university, you are welcome. Our own vice chancellor, you are welcome. All past vice chancellors, all visiting vice chancellors, member of national assembly, all awardees of today, all our chiefs and chiefs, our grandparents of today, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me recognize, because when I saw the list of the professors, uh, I have to recognize them specially because we have a lot of professors in this great university. I recognize all the professors here present. Yeah, it is a great honor again for me to welcome you all to this historic occasion. The Tariel Founders Day and the 30th Convocation Ceremony of our great institution. Today's celebration is a special, that is my first convocation, <laughs> the first convocation anyway, as a chancellor of this world-class university known, as, known for academic brilliance around the world. The occasion of the Institution Founders Day provide us with an opportunity to reflect on all that we have accomplished as a university over the past 38 years, as well as to make projections for the year ahead in order to advance the social, economic, and technological development of our country in accordance with our mission and vision. Indeed, this is a historic occasion for us. So let us bring everything that we have to start jubilating. First and foremost, I want to thank President Mohamed Buhari, GCFR, this is the way who is also the visitor of, of this university, for considering me worthy of this national appointment. This appointment amplifies President Mohamed Buhari's unwavering commitment to national unity and cohesiveness. I want to assure you, Mr. President, that I will carry out my obligations as chancellor of this great university diligently and in accordance with the institution regulations governing the chancellor's power. 
this appointment means a lot to me and the good people of Ondo State, as well as the entire Southwest region. I pledge to promote harmony among the university's many ethnic groups so that we can work together to realize the lovely goal set forth by the institution founding fathers. Mr. President, please accept my heartfelt gratitude. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity again to pay a glory tribute to university founding fathers whose ambition and dreams paved the way for its foundation. The tree they planted a few years ago have sprouted and flowered with various branches that thank you all of the previous five chancellors of the university for everything you did for the university throughout your stewardship. Uh, I know we will do better during this four years tenure. May God help us. Let me add that as a specialist, as a specialized university of technology, we must continue to think outside the box to ensure that we fulfill the purpose of federal government's establishment of this university by conducting cutting edge research aimed at solving special problems and accelerating economic growth. Since more funding is required for the university to achieve its stated vision and mission, I appeal to the federal government to establish a special fund for specialized university in the country through the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, Test Fund, so that this specialized university can champion the country technological drive in line with the federal government digital economy initiatives. Let me express my gratitude to the University Governing Council and Management for their cordial relationship since the appointment by the federal government. The kind of collaboration is critical for the university to fulfill its institutional goals while also maintaining its enviable status as a specialized university. As a result, I urge the council and management to continue to collaborate cooperatively for the university's benefits. To suppose grad, graduate graduates, I join your parents, friends, and well wishers in congratulating you on new certificate for you about to receive today from this illustrious institution. This certificate we get, this certificate we get today, this certificate that you get today is a license to go forth and change the world for the better. I wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors. To order for our deeds of our honorary doctorate degrees, I join your colleagues, friends, and well wishers in congratulating you on your recognition from this illustrious institution. To me, it is a well desired honor. Today, we become 2022 graduates of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. We should now consider Food MENA as our alma mater. And remember that other graduates 
we've been looking up to us as a role model. Since we have a top-notch, top-notch personality who are awarding doctorate degree today, uh, I know it's a blessing to this institution. Uh, you are going to see a lot of changes within four years because of this powerful who are now become the alma mater of this great institution. I would like to applaud the university vice chancellor. Uh, I can keep on celebrating my vice chancellor for what he has been doing so far. Uh, for what he will continue to do for the remaining of the external. He has performed wonderfully well, wonderfully well. So we should all celebrate him. Thank you, our Vice Chancellor. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to convey my profound gratitude to staff, students, and women. You know, when you. <laughs> You know, I congratulate the, once again the vice chancellor and the council. They, can, they were able to work with the union because over my future in Akure, there's a lot of time that I mediate between the union and the staff. Uh, I'm not saying they are stubborn, but they are just demanding for their right. <laughs> So thank you for managing both union and the council. Finally, finally, uh, let me thank the organizers to this hill for providing a comfortable, very comfort podium. Maybe consider the chairman myself so that I'll be able to read conveniently here by not making it the height of the visitor. <laughs> so I, I want to assure you all that you always enjoy my, you know, not fatherly. We are all together. We are going to work together. You know, brotherly, fatherly, everybody work together to make this future is great already. We want to make it the greater of the greatest. So, uh, we, anything that we can do to transform, to transform, more transformation is needed. More surgical is needed in this university. I think the awardees of today, they are hearing me. Uh, the son of the soil is here, is one of the awardees. So we, <laughs> Mr. President, <you> are <laughs> so we want to have the effect of the awardees with this city to four years so that we can do something. And the president of the African Development Bank is here. So what we need all we can get. This is part of Africa. It's part of Africa. Yes. <laughs> so, so we'll be looking forward to talk to you, to see you for fun from time to time, whatever you can do for this great university. So uh, to all the invited guests, thank you for honoring our invitation and joining Mercy's back to your fearless destination. God bless you all. Chancellor, sir, I have the honor to call upon the Pro Chancellor and Chairman of the Governing Council, Professor Olu Obafemi, 
NNOM to deliver his address to the convocation. Pro Chancellor, sir. The visitor and president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, Your Excellency, the Governor of Niger State, who is seated in Dublin, for him, Alaji Abaka Sanibelu. The Honorable Minister of Education, members of the National Assembly, members of the Federal Executive Council, members of the Niger State House of Assembly, members of the State Executive Council, the Executive Secretary NUC, the State Executive Council, the Chancellor of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, His Royal, His Royal Highness, Oba Alade Toimbo, Ogunla Di, Adel Lucy, Oduno II, the 47th and current DG of Akure, who is a Doctor of Technology, Honoris Causa. Your Imperial Majesty, the Sultan of Sokoto, other Royal Highnesses, the Esunope, the, yes, the Emir of Mina, and other very distinguished Royal Highnesses, my colleagues, members of the Governing Council, Federal University of Technology MENA, the very dynamic, very versatile Vice Chancellor, who has borne various names since I came here. He is known also as the man who has a school of thought. He is also called Mr. Project. <laughs> His and members of his management, former vice chancellors, registrar, visiting vice chancellors and registrars here present, members of Senate, and all professors who are automatically members of Senate, deans, heads of department, parents, and the very proud graduates of today including the honorary graduates who will be brought today, who will be honored today. We have a former president of this country, Major General, General Abu Salam. We have the very foresight looking, far side, far sighted, um, the man in charge of the African Development Bank who has made all Africans proud. Graduates of this great university, gentlemen of the press, my own invited guests, including my fair half, my wife, greatest Nigerian students, greatest Nigerian students, ladies and gentlemen, this convocation is the first since my appointment as the eighth substantive pro chancellor and chairman of the governing council of this great Federal University of Technology, MENA, by His Excellency General Buhari, GCFR. 
It is thus, with great pleasure, that I rise to welcome and address this significant gathering at the eighth Founders Day and Chartered Convocation Ceremonies of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, which is Nigeria's highly coveted specialized university of prime choice. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to utilize this opportunity to formally condole with the families, friends, and the university itself over the sad demise of the immediate pro-chancellor, my predecessor, and chairman of governing council of this great university, the great first criminologist of this country, Professor Femi Odekuli, who was a personal friend of four decades and a very cherished brother. His death came as a shock to all of us. But because he lived such a fulfilled life as a frontline academic and a national patriot, we must all, all take solace in the fact that he has left his footprints on the sand of time, especially in the academia and also in governance. May Almighty God grant him eternal rest. It is in recognition of his immense contribution to the peace and development of this university that the School of Life Science, Sciences Complex has been named after Professor Femi Odekunle as Professor Femi Odekunle's complex to immortalize his name. <laughs> to the eminent Nigerians being awarded honorary degree of this university, your achievements are laudable and you are role models to the younger graduates of this university ceremony. It is because of those styling qualities that this university, which does not just award its honorary degrees, have found you all worthy. Congratulations. I salute and congratulate you all for the honor to be shortly bestowed on you as worthy recipients of the degrees you so much deserve and which will soon be conferred on you today. And we believe that your journey to the university will bring a lot of pleasure and a lot of happiness to our university for the good. I also congratulate your families, especially those of you who are with your wives here, for this great honor done on them. It is because of this status that the university is recognizing and honoring on these momentous occasions all of you. Based on my interaction with the university management, staff, students, and in particular, the unions who have interacted with exceedingly, I consider myself fortunate to have been assigned to a university of this qualitative, serene, peaceful and secure university. Consequently, I am thrilled to join the university's management, staff, and students in congratulating all of our postgraduate graduates and their families on the successful completion of their studies. The council of this university wishes you very huge successes in your future endeavor. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I would like to emphasize unequivocally that the Governing Council is happy to be associated with the governance of this university. It has a national and international staff. It is cosmopolitan. The student body is also international. 
because it has always been a place where all Nigerians and non-Nigerians feel at home because the environment is clement, conducive, calm, and secure. A second ago, I was whispering to His Imperial Majesty, the Sultan, who says that the Premier University University of Ibano is the best. Who can argue with his eminence? This university is the fastest growing in importance. <laughs> we are grateful to the visitor, President Mohammed Buhari, and the Honorable, Honorable Minister of Education for not only appointing us in the first instance, but also for sending us to this great university. The university's manifest excellence and high academic qualities are a source of pride and esteem to all of us. In line with the Governing Council's desire to promote staff and students' welfare, I am happy to report that the Governing Council at its recent meeting held in November 2021 considered and approved the unprecedentedly massive number of promotion cases for both teaching and non-teaching staff for the years 2020-2021. More than 90 professors were promoted, and all cadres. Council is abreast of the troubling infrastructural needs of the university and the desire for special greater funding for university to enable advancement in teaching, research, and community service. We require funds to construct hostels, build perimeter fences. Our council is very porous and insecure, generally because it is not fenced, in spite of which, of course, we have managed to keep it secure. We require funds to build accommodation and to improve the security situation on our campuses. We call on all well-meaning Nigerians, many eminent ones who are also here, including our to be graduates, to rise up for the occasion and help us solve the infrastructural deficiencies of our university. No doubt, the plea for improved capital appropriation from the federal government is in order. Surely, no, no government can provide the money for running all universities. But we deserve and ask for more capacity, improved allocation to education that will affect tertiary institutions. In spite of this, we are very grateful to an agency of the federal government, Tet Fund, for the tremendous job they have done in helping us address infrastructural problems in the university. Right now, they are also helping to address knowledge problems, knowledge content, books, laboratories, research. We are very grateful to Tet Fund. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I must express my gratitude to the university's host communities for their cooperation and compassion. I'm grateful to His Excellency Governor Abaka Sanibelu. I'm grateful also to previous leaders of our country, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, GCFR, and General Absalami, Absalam Alagi Abaka, GCFR, no other university institution, no other city in this country has housed two former presidents. <laughs> this is a special advantage to us. We have been harnessing it, and we know that we will harness it more. I trust that the university will continue to enjoy greater support from this great host whose presence no Nigerian university has surpassed. Ladies and gentlemen, 
my colleagues on the governing council are determined to focus and support the appeal to keep the industry on a high pedestal in a common ambition to realize the university's vision and mission. I also want to emphasize the critical import of maintaining the integrity, accountability, and due process in the university. I congratulate the university's administration, senate, and staff on their dedication to the accountability and transparency in running the university. I would like to express my gratitude to the staff and student unions in ensuring the smooth operation of the institution and the tranquility on our campuses. I implore them to do more. In our own town, we will do everything to meet all the new demands of both the unions and the students. I assure you, the unions, that our drive to continue the status quo, Council will continue to address the justifiable needs of all stakeholders of this great citadel of learning. Finally, and very significantly, I want to express my gratitude to the Vice Chancellor, Professor Ablai Bala, for his dedicated leadership to the advancement of the university. During these convocation ceremonies, 23 high quality projects have been commissioned. These projects include three schools with all the departments fully built and equipped. I saw that Dr. Adishina was very impressed and said this is indeed a university of technology. This is an attestation of Vice Chancellor's dedication to excellence in whatever he does. It is important to put on record, especially as this is your last conv convocation as Vice Chancellor, Professor Bala, our appreciation of your unquestionable patriotic, patriotic commitment, selfless and patriotic service to the university, and to, on behalf of the university, we wish to raise this university to loftier heights, which we have continued to embark upon. Let me therefore assure you, Mr. Vice Chancellor, that the Governing Council, led by myself, will not rest on our oars until we have completed our task of making this university a credible model for its peers and which has been your own endeavor. Once again, I congratulate the graduates, their parents and relations. I wish you all success in all your enterprises for an assured future for yourself and the future of our great university and country. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Governing Council of our great university and the entire food in our community, I thank you all very profusely for honoring our invitation to be with us at this convocation. I wish you all journey masses back to your various destinations, and I wish this country greater heights. Thank you. still watching the live broadcast of the 38th Founders Day and 38th Convocation Ceremonies of the Federal University of Chancellor Technology, Sir, MENA. I have the honor and to call upon the just listen to Professor the Abla speech Abla by the Pro-Chancellor of the University uh, in the person of Pro Professor Olu. The event will commence, I mean continue with the speech of the Vice Chancellor of the University. But just a little, uh, I mean, a few remarks about the University of, Federal University of Technology, MENA, which was established on February 1st, 1983, with a vision to become a world-class institution of learning and Nigeria's leading university 
organized for its excellence in capacity building and service delivery. His Excellency Dr. Akumi Adeshina C.O.N. Malam Mele Kolo Kari and Alhaji Abdul Samad Rabiu C.O.N. Members of the National Assembly, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar III, CFR MNI, the Chancellor of FUT Minam, His Imperial Majesty, Alade Toimbo Ogunlade Adunisi Odundun II, Deji, and Paramount Ruler of Akure Kingdom. Your Royal Highnesses, members of the Niger State House of Assembly, members of the Niger State Executive, I hope I've, I have recognized the Executive Governor. I'm sorry, sir. The Executive Governor, Niger State. Sorry for the breach in protocol. The Executive Secretary, NUC, and other chief executive officers of MDS here present, the Pro Chancellor and Chairman Governing Council, Professor Olu Obafemi, Ashuaju of Kiri Kingdom, members of the University Governing Council, visiting vice chancellors and heads of other institutions, former vice chancellors, principal officers of the university. Former principal office, uh, of, uh, former principal officers of the university. My wife's and better house here present. Members of Senate, congregation, and alumni. Uh, distinguished guests, uh, graduates, and their parents. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Great Nigerian students. I have the great pleasure of welcoming you to the second of the two days marking the 38 Founders Day celebrations and the 38 Convocation Ceremonies of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. The university considers it a great honor to have on its campus such eminent personalities as are seated here this afternoon. We thank you all for your presence. The convocation is unique in more senses than one. It is the first since the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, which necessitates the adoption of additional health and safety measures. Secondly, it is the first convocation since the passing away of our former pro-chancellor, the late Professor Femi Odekule, and the former vice-chancellor, Professor Mohammed Abdullahi Dania. As painful as these losses are, we are consoled by the fact that both men lived exemplary and impactful lives worthy of emulation. May their souls rest in peace, and may their family members, loved ones, and associates continue to derive comfort from the legacies of their lives, and may they have the fortitude to bear the losses. Thirdly, today's convocation is being held under the leadership of a new chancellor of the university. His Imperial Majesty, Alade Toimbo Ogunlade Adelusi Odundun II, Deji, and Paramount Ruler of Akure Kingdom. It is also the first convocation since the constitution of the University Governing Council by the President and Commander in Chief, President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR. The Chairman of Council and Pro-Chancellor, Professor Olu Obafemi, the Ashwajo of Kiri Kingdom, is a cerebral 
and a highly respected academic and the recipient of the highly prestigious Nigerian National Order of Merit. The university is already richly harvesting from the experience, wide network, and wise counsel of this eminent Nigerian and his colleagues. We also have, since the last convocation, a crop of new principal officers and the persons of Professor Farouk Adamukuta, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Mrs. Hadiza Goje, the Bursa, and Dr. Katamba Abu Bakar Saka, the University Librarian. The other unique thing about this convocation is that for the first time since my assumption of office as Vice Chancellor, the university will be awarding honorary doctorates to some eminent personalities who are unrivaled leaders in their chosen careers and who we consider worthy role models to be associated with. <clears throat> Finally, and on a personal note, this is a very unique occasion for me. I consider this convocation a good beginning of the end of my tenure of five years as vice chancellor, since I would have completed my tenure by the time the next convocation will become due. This then will be an opportunity for me to share a few of my experiences in the over four years we've been in office. The Chancellor, sir, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to stand before you and observe that the Federal University of Technology, MENA, is in a sound and better shape than it was when I assumed office four years ago. In line with the vision of the university, FUT Mina has continued to be a leading Nigerian university recognized for excellence and has consistently been ranked among the top 10 Nigerian and top 10 African universities. Our students and alumni continue to excel and are world beaters anywhere they found themselves. The university, like the rest of the world, was disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic since early 2020. This crisis challenged university's resilience but despite the industrial action by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, faculty members and other support staff of the university rose to the occasion by responding sufficiently to mitigate the adverse effects of the crisis on the university's activities. We saw the challenge as an opportunity to strengthen our capacity for teaching, research, and innovation. Various research products were developed by the faculty in response to the challenges of the pandemic. These include the development of ventilators, decontamination chambers, hand sanitizers, customized face shields and double-edged face masks, manual and automated hand washing systems, and manual and automated sanitizer dispensing machines, as well as contactless temperature monitoring devices. Our staff also developed and deployed a number of virtual classroom and learning management system software for online teaching. Added to this, the university upgraded the infrastructure and initiated some reforms at the University Health Services to enhance safety and capacity in disease surveillance and reporting and infection prevention and control. 
to promote best practices in academic culture and avoid the arbitrariness and uncertainties that characterize the absence of clear rules, a number of policy reforms were introduced, resulting in the development and launching of five new policies, including those on student support services, anti-sexual harassment, and intellectual property. Additional policies that have been developed or reviewed include those on research, ICT, environmental hazard, health and safety, research, ethics and integrity, anti-corruption, and persons with disabilities. The university in the last four years signed 32 agreements and memoranda of understandings for partnerships with institutions and industry partners. This volume is unprecedented in our history, and the agreements cover a diverse range of engagements, including research and development, faculty exchange, public-private partnerships, undergraduate and postgraduate affiliation programs, and students' internships and entrepreneurship training. In our desire to provide education that is globally competitive, responsive, and consonant with government's policies on economic diversification, the university has established 10 new undergraduate degree programs, including those for mining engineering, petroleum and gas engineering, and information technology. To ensure good quality teaching and curriculum delivery, the university has, in the past four years, sponsored 225 academic staff for study fellowships, including 144 PhD fellowships, and about 60% of all the faculty members today possess PhD degrees. The oversight functions of statutory units, such as the Directorate of Quality Assurance and Productivity and Servicom, are being complemented by that of the Quality Teaching Monitoring Committee, established under the leadership of a former Deputy Vice Chancellor to ensure that lectures are delivered as and when due. 42 of the university's 44 undergraduate programs have full accreditation by the National Universities Commission, while all programs have full accreditation from their respective professional bodies. We have procured and deployed more resources for teaching and learning. Our subscriptions to quality research databases and the development and deployment of digital library management software have swelled the e-library users to over 21,000. Students' academic processes, starting from registration to examination resource management, are fully automated. And parents and guardians are able to monitor the academic progress of their children and words from the comfort of their homes or anywhere else in the world. The university is improving access to university education through its open and distance learning program, which is one of only 11 licensed by the National Universities Commission. The number of institutions running degree affiliation programs with the university has also more than doubled in the past four years. The quality of our postgraduate programs and timeliness in completion have made our postgraduate school one of choice in the country. Starting from this year, an annual prize has been instituted for the best PhD thesis. Since 2018, at least 15 new postgraduate programs have been established. They include a doctoral research program in climate change and human habitat, PhD and masters in statistics, 
food safety, toxicology, molecular biology, molecular biology and bioinformatics, and food science and technology. New postgraduate diploma programs have also been introduced for food science and technology, microbiology, and in public health. The university's internationalization drive has been helped by the infusion of new postgraduate programs, resulting in the university today having international students from over 20 countries. Our desire to institutionalize best practices in research and development has seen us develop research-centered policies, including the intellectual property policy. We established the University Research Ethics Committee in 2018, and it has since been issuing ethical clearance for researchers in the life sciences. We have also successfully conducted the first intellectual property audit of our university and organized our first and second patent unveiling ceremonies in 2019 and 2021, respectively. All of these are to build the right research culture in the university. Our increasing, res our increasing research profile has attracted funding support for the establishment of three research centers and offices the Intellectual Property and Technological Technology Transfer Office was equipped by the National Office for Technology Acquisition and Promotion, NOTAP, while the Center of Excellence for Technology Development is funded by the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board. The African Center of Excellence for Mycotoxin and Food Safety was established with a grant of six million US dollars from the World Bank. The Nigerian Communications Commission also recently instituted a professorial chair to the tune of 20 million Naira. We have increased the number of registered patents from one to nine in, three, in the last three years and over a dozen of our patent applications have been filed. We also now have two registered copyrights. The commercialization of patents has, in the last one year, earned the university a number of contracts with the combined worth of over 150 million naira. In the past four years, the university attracted research grants worth over 10 million US dollars from external funding agencies and more than 704 million naira from local funding sources. Ted Fund accounts for about 80% of the local funds. Other sources include MDS, such as the Nigerian Communications Commission, Petroleum Technology Development Fund, and the Rural Materials Research and Development Council. The university has, in the past four years, demonstrated how students are at the core of our policies and programs. We have developed a student support services policy to enhance students' experiences on our campuses and have also established a unit led by a former registrar to coordinate the implementation of the policy. The 2021 ranking of Nigerian public universities by the NUC places FUT Mina first in the retention and graduation of students with an efficiency of 97.57%. The university has entered into agreements with industry partners, to provide internship and similar placements for our students. Through the university's International Test Center, the ICT Academies and Entrepreneurship Center, we are providing a variety of specialized trainings and certifications for our students so as to enhance their employability and prepare them for life after the university. 
We have instituted the Vice Chancellor Students Award Ceremony since 2020 to recognize students with outstanding academic performance and students who have won laurels for the university in various areas of academic and extracurricular activities. Over 900 students have so far received certificates of recognition, cash prizes, and scholarships since the introduction of the award. The university has launched the Students Benevolence Fund, which is our initiative at providing financial support to indigent students so that no student of FUT MENA will drop out of school on account of financial difficulties. <clears throat> the Federal University of Technology MENA has since 2014 ensured that graduates collect their certificates on the day of convocation. We have also introduced reforms in the processing and issuance of transcripts such that graduates are now able to receive their transcripts within two hours of request. Starting from this year's convocation, not only are graduates able to collect their certificates immediately after this ceremony, but they can also collect the students' copies of their transcripts on request. The 2018 Nigerian Graduate Report ran the Federal University of Technology, MENA, as the fourth most preferable by employers of level with an employability index of 60.61%. The university has met the reward and retention of well-trained and motivated workforce a priority. We staff any promotion as and when due. And between 2018 and 2021, a total of 1,216 staff were promoted, including eight to seven professors. The university also awarded study fellowships to 308 staff and sponsored 419 staff for, at for attendance of conferences and workshops. The university has, in the, four, in the last four years, organized more than 30 in-house training for its staff in ICT, in administration, examination management, entrepreneurship, and business development. The, the committee system is a veritable and time-tested governance tool in the university, which we have readily deployed to multiply the opportunities for staff and students' inclusion in university governance and decision-making. To this end, five retreats and over 125 committees have been constituted since my assumption of office. We expanded the scope and categories of the Savicom Awards so that more persons now receive the awards. 29 staff were awarded by Savicom in 2019, and about 40 others are said to receive, receive the award uh, this month of 2020, 22. We initiated the Vice Chancellor's Commendation Awards, and at its maiden edition in 2021, 164 staff and student awardees were recognized for distinguishing themselves in the seven categories of academic excellence. I'm proud to observe the warm and cordial relationships that exist amongst the various unions in the university and between the unions and management. These have engendered a peaceful and conducive environment for learning and for work. No wonder FUT MENA continues to serve as a standard bearer for campus peace and progress. I wish to thank our staff and students' unions for, lit, for little would have been achieved without their support and cooperation. We continue to have robust engagements with our host community through a variety of interventions, including sports, agricultural extension, capacity building on ICT, entrepreneurship, and skill acquisition programs, as well as infrastructural interventions 
in education, power, water, healthcare, security, and cultural facilities. Funding by the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TED Fund, and the Needs Assessment Fund for the Revitalization of Public Universities has enabled us to start and complete more than 30, pro more than, more than 30 projects, 23 of which have been commissioned this week, and, and which will allow for the relocation to the Gideon Kwano campus from Boso campus, the School of Life Sciences, School of Physical Sciences, and the Postgraduate School. A number of MDS have also helped in the provision of infrastructure and equipment to the universe. We appreciate the support from the Nigerian Communications Commission, National Information Technology Development Agency, Nigerian Meteorological Agency, National Office for Technology Acquisition and Promotion, National Intelligence Agency, and the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. The university is through PPP arrangements also making provisions for additional infrastructure, including students' hostels, a hotel, and varied business ventures. Using funds from internally generated revenue has enabled the university to carry out major innovation projects and provide critical infrastructure, including 10 water supply projects, five projects under transportation, six projects under roads, walkways, and signatures, four under health and safety, and two under radio and television. Confirmment of postgraduate and honorary degrees. The Chancellor said, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday we graduated a total of 3,000 892 undergraduate students. I'm glad to inform you that a total of 1,157 students will be awarded higher degrees and diplomas today. Of these, 200 are for postgraduate diplomas, 836 for master's degrees, and 121 for doctorate degrees. The graduates have been found worthy both in character and in learning. I heartily congratulate and rejoice with you and your families for attaining this outstanding success. I have no doubt that the knowledge and experience you garnered while undergoing your various programs will be of immense benefit and a great asset that you will find useful in your future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also witnessing today the award of honorary doctorates to four outstanding Nigerians who epitomize the Nigeria of our dreams. They are His Excellency General Abdul Salami Al Haji Aubakar, GCFR, former Head of State of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. His Excellency Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino, President, African Development Bank, and former Minister of Agriculture, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Al Haji Dr. Abdul Samad Rabi Unsion, Chairman, Chief Executive Officer, Boa Group of Companies, and Dr. Mele Kolo Kiari, Group Managing Director and Chief. Executive Officer, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. We have in our midst now General Abdul Salami Aubakar and Dr. Akiumi Adeshino. The other two have not been able to come because of flight problems. The weather has been very bad, and so they had, the flights had to go back to Abuja. But they are on their way coming.
I understand they are coming by road. We hope that before the end of this program, they will be able to join us. Although I must resist the temptation to preempt their citations, which will be read by the university's orator shortly, my pleasure and humility in hosting this League of Awardees is overwhelming. And there can be nothing in this vice chancellor's speech that will sufficiently do justice to the tenacity, devotion, and lifetime accomplishments of these achievers who have played and continue to play different but difficult and demanding roles in the service of our nation and service of the world. I will nonetheless want to say a few things about these distinguished Nigerians, and more will be said in their citation. His Excellency General Abdul Salami al Haji Aubakar GCFR, former head of state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, has had the enviable record of playing critical roles in the restoration of democracy in Nigeria. <laughs> On the first occasion, he, it was, that led the military parade at the handover ceremony that ushered in the Second Republic in 1979. <laughs> 20 years later, as the then head of state, he again led the military to hand over power to a civilian dispensation. <laughs> this patriotic duty is very, very obvious now and can be understood given the current problem we are having in the intrusion of military back to governance in West Africa. And therefore, we want to thank General Abdul Salami Aubakar for his leadership. He has since handing over to a civilian dispensation, committed himself to being a statesman and working for the peace and unity of this country. We thank you, sir. His Excellency Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino, CON, President, African Development Bank, and former Minister of Agriculture, Federal Republic of Nigeria, is a globally renowned development economist and a man of many firsts. He was the first student to get a first class honors degree in agricultural economics at the Obafemi Awolowo University. <laughs> the first public sector minister in Africa to win the Forbes Africa Person of the Year Award and the first person to be elected as the president of the African Development Bank with 100% of the votes of the bank's yes holders. A bold reformer, Dr. Adeshino is first amongst equals in outstanding leadership, passion, and dedication to African development. al Haji Abdul Samad Rabiu CON, the executive chairman of a group of companies, is a foremost industrialist who felt placed on him the onerous responsibility of overseeing family businesses at a very young age. His Midas touch and uncanny ability to grab at business opportunities at opportune time have made him the juggernaut that he is today and a major player in the Nigerian economic sector. His legendary philanthropic activities are perhaps rivaled only by his patriotic disposition to checkmate excessive and unbridled, and unbridled capitalist exploitation of the Nigerian economy by intervening at critical moments of our national life to break the monopoly in key sectors of the economy, especially in the sugar and cement industries. Malam Mele Kolo Kari, Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, is the 
quintessential technocrat who has worked tirelessly and unassumedly in pushing for bold reforms in Nigeria's oil industry, leading to the passage of the Petroleum Industry Act of 2021, and the NNPC publicly publishing its audited financial statements for the first time in the history of the corporation. I wish to, on behalf of the university, especially welcome and congratulate these distinguished citizens whose patriotism and legacies of service have contributed in no small measure to the unity, peace, security, and prosperity of our country. The university considers with great sense of honor the presence of these eminent awardees who are seated here in our midst today. The humility and maturity which they have been personally available here today inspires, confirms the decision of the University Senate and Governing Council that they indeed merit the honor to be accorded them this afternoon. I congratulate them. In the last four years, I have had the pleasure of working with so many people within and outside the university. Without their cooperation, support, goodwill and prayers, little progress will have been made. Given that there are too numerous to mention individually, I would rather wish to thank all our stakeholders. I want to especially appreciate and thank our host community, especially the Royal Fathers, ably led by the Chairman of the Traditional Council of uh, Emirs, His Royal Highness, the Etsunupe, who is here with us today. I want to appreciate and thank the opinion leaders in the state, especially our elder statesmen, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, GCFR, and General Abdul Salami Al Haji Abu Bakr, GCFR. I want to thank the governor of Niger State and Niger State government for the overwhelming support they've been providing to the university in so many areas. I want to thank the other traditional rulers as well. I thank government, foreign partners, ministries, departments and agencies, non-governmental organizations, venture partners and donors, the council, senate, staff, alumni, and students of the university with whom we've been working together for the good of this university and our nation. Finally, I would like to thank and appreciate the tireless efforts of members of the University Ceremonies Committee, ably led by the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, Professor E. E. Udensi, in ensuring a successful convocation. I thank you all for your kind attention. God bless you all. Honorable Chancellor, sir, the persons who will be presented to you have fulfilled the requirements of the status and the regulations of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, and have been found worthy, both in character and learning, to be conferred with the postgraduate diplomas of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. I will now call upon the Dean, Postgraduate School, to present the recipients of postgraduate diploma. Dean, PG School. Will recipients of postgraduate diploma please stand?
Honorable Chancellor, sir. I present the graduates standing before you and those who are unavoidably absent for whom I stand proxy, who have successfully completed the postgraduate diploma examinations and have been found worthy, both in character and learning, to receive the postgraduate diplomas of Federal University of Technology, MENA. By the authority first heard on me as chancellor, I award you all the degrees of Master of Technology and Master of Engineering of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. Congratulations. Postgraduate diploma graduates, please raise your cap wear them and put the tassel to the left and remain seated. Thank you. Honorable Chancellor, sir, the persons who will be presented to you have fulfilled the requirements of the status and the regulations of the Federal University of Technology, MENA and have been found worthy, both in character and learning, to be conferred with the Masters of Technology and Master of Engineering degrees of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. I will now call upon the Dean of Postgraduate School to present the recipients of Master's degree, the Dean Postgraduate School. Will the graduating student for degrees of Master of Technology and Master of Engineering please stand? Honorable Chancellor, sir, I present the graduates standing before you and those who are unavoidably absent, for whom I stand proxy who have successfully completed their Masters of Technology and Master of Engineering and found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be awarded the degrees of Master of Technology and Master of Engineering of Federal University of Technology, MENA. By the authority first heard on me as chancellor, I award you all the degrees of Master of Technology and Master of Engineering of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. Congratulations. Master degree graduates, please remove your cap. Wear it back and turn the tassel to the left. Please be seated. Honorable Chancellor, sir, the persons who will be presented to you have fulfilled the requirements and the status and the regulations of the Federal University of Technology, MENA and have been found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be conferred with the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. I will now call upon the Dean of Postgraduate School to present the recipients of degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Dean Postgraduate School. Will the graduating students for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy 
please stand. Honorable Chancellor, sir, I present the graduates standing before you and those who are unavoidably absent, for whom I stand proxy, and who have successfully completed their Doctor of Philosophy program and found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be awarded degrees of Doctor of Philosophy of Federal University of Technology, MENA. By the authority vested on me as chancellor, I award you all the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. Congratulations. PAG degree holders, please remove your cap. Wear it back and turn the tassel to the left. Please be seated. The Chancellor, sir, I hereby want to invite the PAD graduates to file out and have a handshake with the Chancellor, sir. From the Department of Agri, Econs, and Farm Management, we have Adetunji Aminor Laita. Please file out quickly and have a handshake with the Chancellor. Ehimoye Sylvester, Isonguyo Rachel Gabriel, Zakiamba Danladi Bebwa, Adewumi Adeoluwa, Samuel Yusuf Jedna, Sule Balaraba Abubakar, Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, Azenga Jacob Ayo, Marcos Philemon Lekwot, Mma Dauda Sanchita, Saliu Abu Garba. From Department of Agri Extension and Rural Development again, we have Mohammed Usman and Pelemon Jacob Jide. Animal Production Department, Makinde Olayinka John. Sikiru Akim Babatunde, Kolo Philip Shodi, Ogwiko Antonia, Ishola Akim. Crop Production, Adedira Olaotan Abimbola, Moses Samuel Bassi, from Department of Water Resources, Aquaculture and Fishery Technology, Ghana Defian Emmanuel, Shetima A. Ishatu, Auta Johanna Elia, Tandme Apollos Garba, Auta Johanna Elia. From Department of Computer Engineering, we have Abdullah Ibrahim Mohammed. Department of Electrical Electronics Engineering, Ajiboye Johnson Adebenga. Telecom Engineering, Adebo Samuel Atai, Ismail Abidin Adekunle. School of Environmental Technology, Architecture, Odaud Ogbede Sunday, Ahmed Salau, Building Department, Bangbade Adebisi Abosede, Madu Nicholas Dumebi, Estate Valuation, Estate Management and Valuation, Adeogun Adekunle Sunday, Shitu Wasiu Oyewale, Quantity Surveying, Okosun Blessing, Computer Science, Adepoju, Solomon Adelowo, Library and Information Technology, Abdul Dayan Fatima Jibril, Busari Suebat Ajoke, Salau Sadiat Adetoro, Chuks Ibe, Priscilla Oluchi, from School of Infrastructure, Process Engineering and Technology, Department of Agri and Bioresources Engineering. Olan Rewaju Taufik Olayinka, Chemical Engineering, Bernard Esther, Ibrahim Abubakar Abubakar, Saba Ahmed Mohammed, Alaya Ibrahim Sharifat, Babatunde Esther Olubumi, 
Salako Oluwa Femi, Civil Engineering, Adama Godwin Jia, Okubain Victor Emoshili, Abubakar Mahamud, Yusuf Abdul Aziz, Mechanical Engineering, Yerima Mohammed Liman, Agada Sunday Ojonimi, Mokwa Baba James, Lawal Sadiq Sayos, Uhohami Abdul Wahab, Abba Aji Mala Ali, Abba Imadu Engbede, Olaiya Kabiru Alani, Onuoha David Chikaroma, Ata Ile Benjamin, Awode Emmanuel, Buhari, Buhari Shehu Aliyu, Aruna Victor Ndaraba, Karim Aduagba Ganiyu, Woma Timothy Yakubu. Animal Biology, we have from Bemena Charles Chinedu, Usman Yaman Hadija, Hassan Suleiman Chuntar, Garba Yusuf, Biochemistry, Ape Daniel Ojechenemi, Suleiman Rukayat, Microbiology, Achibe Chukwonzo Emperor, Atiribom Rimasongo Yohana, Elemba Odena Kachi, Yahemba Priscilla Aodona, Owo Yale Adeoye Daniel, Adamu Aishatu, Plant Biology, Unwosu Dixon Jr., Osaze Egoza, Yahaya Sadiq Abdurrahman, Chemistry Department, Akoma Ann Obilo, Mustafa Said, Tanko Ezekiel, Sumaila Abdulmomin, Oko Andrew Lucky, Geography, Jande Joseph Asen, Ayongo Tesser, Abu Bakar Abu Bakar, Hassan Aisha Tubelu, Idris Ali Ujagi, Mansur Abu Bakar Mawashi, Musa Musa, and Salihu Abdullahi Chado, Geology, Ame Goche Mark, Olatunji Olubu Sayu Aikin Yele, Mathematics, Aye Patrick Olabanji, Mohammed Ibrahim Baba Shabafu, Abdurrahim Al Musba, Audu Khadija James, Oyubu Julius Peter, Evans Patience Ogone Jeforo, Physics, Daniel Thomas Ojunugwa, Matthew Alpha, Daniel Mam Tawe, Education Technology, Emeka Chukwe Emeka Joshua, Jima Olalere Fatai, Karim Mary Ayanjoke, Shobo Wale Favor Musumola, Ojoye Bushra Temitope, Abolani Wa Lucy Folanomi, Sali Umeimunat Rachel, Thaddeus Elin, Usman Hussaini, and Ola Dimeji Tessi Kolawole. From Industrial and Technology Education, we have Hassan Yunusa Jemilu. Agonsi Rafael Ikechuku, and lastly, Department of Science Education. We have Abdurrahim Musba, Abdullahi Amina, Abdul Salam Bilkis Adenike, Yakubu Abdullahi Adinoyi, and last but not the least, Nkocha Celestine Ngozi. Chancellor, sir, I have the honor to present to you the following, and those who, for good reasons, are unavoidably absent, and for whom I start proxy, who have distinguished themselves by winning special award 
in their respective fields of study during the 2019 through 2020 session. As I call the names, each of the respondents will come forward to shake the chancellor. The award to be given is known as Professor Ablai Balas Award for the best doctoral thesis of Federal University of Technology MENA for the year 2019-2020, endowed by the Association of Postgraduate Students, Federal University of Technology MENA branch. The second runner of the award is Abdullah Ibrahim Mohammed. Abdullah Ibrahim Mohammed. The first runner up is Abdul Dayan Fatima Jibri. Abdul Dayan Fatima Jibri. And the winner of the award the winner of the award of Professor Ablai Balas Award for the best doctoral thesis of the Federal University of Technology for the 2019 slash 2020 session is Mustafa Saeed. Chancellor Sir, the Federal University of Technology MENA, on the recommendation of Senate and with approval of Council, has found Malem Mele Kolo Kiari, the Group Managing Director, Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC Limited, worthy to be conferred with the honorary degree of Doctor of Engineering. Honoris Cosa of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. I therefore call on the University of Reto to present the honorary graduate. University of Reto, please.
Chancellor, sir. The Federal University of Technology, MENA, on the recommendation of Senate and with the approval of Council, has found Dr. Akin Wumi, A. Adisena, CON, President, African Development Bank, worthy to be conferred with the honorary degree of Doctor of Technology, Honoris Causa of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. I therefore call on the university orator to present the honorary graduate. University orator, please. Respect, I'd like to request Dr. Akimumi Additional to be on his feet. The Chancellor, sir. In the words, of the Irish poet, W.B. Yeats, education is not the feeling of a pill, but the lighting of fire. This fire was lit and sustained in Dr. Akemomi Adeshino, commander of the Order of Niger, a passionate defender of African farmers, a man of great learning and skill, whose profound knowledge and experience have won for him global recognition. By his immense and great learning, he has distinguished himself as an international luminary who is currently serving his second term as the eighth president of the African Development Bank, the first Nigerian to hold the coveted position. Born to a Nigerian farmer on February 6, 1960, in Ibadan, or your state, Aki, as is usually called, additional humble beginning, beginning in a village, primary school, attained a star-like quality when, in 1981, he became the first student in the history of University of Ilife, now Obafemi Aolo University, to graduate with first-class honors in agricultural economics. This lit a fire in him that led to a master's degree, 1985, and a PhD, 1988, in agricultural economics from Purdue University, Indiana, USA, where he won the Outstanding PhD Thesis Award for that year. Dr. Akimumi Adeshina started his career as an assistant principal economist of the International Crops Research Institute for the semi-arid tropics from 1988 to 1980. He soon after became the principal economist for the West African Rice Development Association, 1990 to 1995, and later became the senior economist and social science coordinator for the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, 1995 to 1998. He was also an associate director and a regional director for the Southern Africa Office of the Rockefeller Foundation for over a decade. The meteoric rise of this son of a humble farmer to become a renowned national and international development economist and agricultural development expert spanned a period of more than 30 years. He was vice president policy and partnership for the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa from 2008 to 2010 and the minister of agriculture 
and rural development from 2010 to 2015. He is a bold reformer who turned the agricultural sector of Nigeria around within four years. He ended 40 years of corruption in the fertilizer sector, developed and implemented a farmer-friendly wallet system that involved the use of mobile phones that transformed the lives of approximately 15 million farmers. He is a firm believer in private sector-led growth. His radical initiatives successfully attracted 5.6 billion US dollars in private sector investments to the agricultural sector in Nigeria and also boosted financing initiatives that benefited youth engagement in agriculture and small and medium enterprises, thus expanding Nigeria's food production by an additional 20, 21 million metric tons. Internationally, Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino, as president of the African Development Bank, has worked with African heads of state and ministers of finance, leaders in the commercial banking industry, and, and central bank governors across several African countries. He success successfully led one of the largest global efforts to leverage domestic bank finance for the agricultural sector. He also led several bold and innova innovative policies and finance initiatives that leverage over four billion US dollars in bank finance commitments to Africa's agricultural sector. He serves globally as one of the commissioners for the Global Climate Commission, co-chaired by Bill Gates and former United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon to tackle global climate and so much more. From a humble, peasant beginning, he became a global trailblazer, recipient of several awards and distinctions. It all started with the prestigious Rockefeller Foundation Social Science Fellowship in 1988, which launched him into his international career, followed by Yara Food Prize in 2007 in Oslo, Norway for his leadership in pioneering innovative approach, approaches to improve access to agricultural inputs for African farmers. He bagged the Distinguished Alumni Award from Purdue University, USA in 2008. Distinguished Alumni Award in 2009, Bulag Cast. Communication Award in 2010 by the Council of Agricultural Science and Technology, United States of America, for his global leadership on agricultural science and technology, and the Grand Commander of Great IFE in 2013, both from the Obafemi Awolowo University, Nigeria. He crowned his stream of laurels with the World Food Prize in 2017 and in 2019. In, in, 2013, in 2019, with the Grand Officer of the National Order of Mary of Tunisia. <laughs> Dr. Additional was conferred with one of the Nigeria's highest national honors. Commander of the Order of the Niger, CON. In 2012, for his outstanding service to his country, he was also recognized for his outstanding leadership, passion, and dedication to accelerating African development, and was awarded the national honors of Senegal, Cameroon, Madagascar, Togo, Liberia, Niger, and Tunisia, respectively. 
He is a 2013 Forbes African Person of the Year for his bold reforms in Nigeria's agricultural sector. Dr. Adeshina, who is also a prolific writer, has authored over 70 scholarly publications on policy, as, on policy and has been recognized by several universities with honorary doctorate degrees. Amongst them are Franklin and Marshall College, USA, 2011, Purdue University, USA, 2014, Adekunle Ajasin University, 2015, Obafemi Aulo University, Nigeria, 2015, Federal University of Technology, Akure, Nigeria, 2017, Michigan State University, USA, 2018, National Defense Academy, Nigeria, 2018, Afe Babaola University, Nigeria, 2018, and University of Alberta, Canada, 2019. In 2017, his alma mater, Purdue University, USA, decorated Dr. Adeshina with, with its highest honor, the Order of the Griffin, a rare honor given only to 50 pers persons since 1893, including Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon. The Global Luminary was, in 2015, cited as one of the top 100 most influential Africans by New African Magazine. <laughs> Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino is happily married with children. Indeed, the Chancellor, sir, it is noteworthy that a man with such extraordinary achievements has not escaped the attention of the Council and Senate of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, that is committed to giving honor to whom honor is due, particularly with respect to endeavors that bear relevance to the institution's mandate. Both bodies in that regard have scrutinized with eagle eyes this Nigerian's field of service and contributions to the development of a secure and qualitative society and have agreed to recognize and honor Dr. Adeshina for his contributions to sustainable development in agriculture, economics, and rural transformation. It is therefore the unanimous decision of the Council and Senate of this great institution to confer on Dr. Akimumi Adeshina the degree of Doctor of Technology, Honoris Causa, Federal University of Technology, Milan. I therefore have the singular honor and privilege to invite you, sir, to effect the conferment.
you've been watching the live broadcast of the 38th Founders Day and 30th Convocation Ceremony of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. What you're watching right now is the confirmment of honorary degree on Dr. Akimumi Adeshina, who is among the recipients of the honoris causa being conferred today by the university. It's indeed an historic moment and one that uh, has drawn from far and near uh, eminent personalities in Nigeria. Uh, we have here the former head of state, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, who is also one of the recipients for the honorary degree. And we have uh, Governor of Niger State, Abubakar Sani Bello, is also here. We have the Sultan of Sokoto, His Eminence Sahad Abubakar is here. You can see Dr. Akimumi and uh, some family members, as well as uh, some uh, professors from the university, including the chancellor of the university. It's no doubt a moment of joy for him. And uh, is elated, as you can see, and he's been congratulated by some persons. Oh, yes. Let's now, go back now to the program. I now call on the awardee to present his acceptance speech. The visitor, His Excellency President Mohamedou Buhari GCFR, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. His Excellency Abubakar Sonny Bello, the Executive Governor of Niger State. Your Excellency, the former Head of State, General Abu Salami Abubakar GCFR. Your Excellency, former Head of State, General Ibrahim Babangida, who I know will have liked to be here, but is watching from home. Our royal father, the Sultan of Sokoto, Saud Abubakar. His Royal Highness, the Etsunupe, Alaji Yahaya Abubakar. And in fact, the, I must say, he's also the Chancellor of the University of Ife, where I got my degree from. Great Ife, sir. His Royal Highness, the Emir of Mina. Let me give a special recognition to Her Excellency, the former First Lady, Lady Justice Mrs. Abu Bakr, the former Chief Judge of Niger State. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, His Royal Highness, Adetunyibo Adelusi, the Odundu II, the Deji, and Paramount Ruler of Akure Kingdom. Mr. Vice Chancellor, Professor Abdullahi Bala, Mr. Registrar of the University Council, members of the University Council and Senate, Mr. Pro Chancellor, Professor Olu Obafemi. Let me, at this point, say to the Vice Chancellor, Professor Abdullahi Bala, you are an impressive and exceptional Vice Chancellor. I am very proud of you, and I wish I had the powers conferred on me today by the university for all of what you've done in four years. I would have conferred on you the honorary degree of excellence as vice chancellor. The faculty members, management and staff of the university, the great students of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, the graduating class of 2022, all royal fathers and emirs that are here present, members of the National Assembly and members of the State Executive Council, 
parents and families and friends, my darling, beautiful and radiant wife, Grace. You see, my success in life is due to the grace of God, but I also have a good grace at home. I wouldn't be who I am today without her. My dear friends who accompany me here today, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I wish to sincerely thank the University Council, the Senate and the Vice Chancellor, and the students of this great university, the Federal University of Technology, MENA, for awarding me an honorary doctorate, Doctor of Technology, DTEC Honorary Council today. What an incredible honor from this great university located in the great city of MENA. MENA is a town that produces great and eminent leaders. MENA has produced two presidents and heads of state of Nigeria, General Ibrahim Babangida, GCFR, General Abdusalami Abubakar, GCFR. I congratulate today my fellow awardees on their honorary doctorate degrees, His Excellency General Abu Salami Abu Bakar, as well as Alaji Abdul Samad Rabiu and Mala Mele Kolo Kiari. Congratulations. It's a great privilege for me to share this stage with you today. I am especially grateful to you, Your Excellency General Abu Salami Abu Bakar, who took me under his wing and lobbied extremely hard for me when I was seeking election as president of the African Development Bank in 2015. He spoke to the then president-elect, Mohamed Buhari, who in turn provided me with great support. He also reached out to His Excellency President Goodluck Jonathan and then the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar to rally support behind me. Your Excellency, you have been such a great part of my success. I wish to use this time to acknowledge that publicly and to thank you most sincerely. Your Excellency, I'm most grateful, sir. I wish to also express my deepest gratitude to His Excellency President Mohamed Bukhari for his tremendous international support leading up to my successful re-election for second time as president of the African Development Bank with 100% of the votes of all 54 African countries and 100% of all the votes of the 27 non-African countries, the first in the history of the bank since its establishment in 1964. But today it's not about me. Today it's about those that I'm looking at. I see before me the new success stories of Nigeria, the graduating class of 2022. You may wave your hand so I can see you. Congratulations. Today is your day. You will be the next success stories of Nigeria. Congratulations. As graduating students of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, you are standing on the brink of opportunities. You have been prepared for success by a world-class university focused on technology. Technology drives the world. I know the power of technology. As Minister of Agriculture, I turn to the power of technology, mobile phones, to provide 15 million farmers with access to improved seeds and fertilizers and to end corruption in the sector. It was revolutionary, the first not only in Africa, but actually was the first in the world. It helped to produce in Nigeria a record additional 21 million metric tons of food. It boosted food security and expanded wealth for farmers. Rural wealth expanded from the northeast across the north central to the northwest, from the southwest, southeast, and to the south south of the country. It brought accountability and transparency in the use of public funds. It changed the lives of farmers, including Hajia Ladi Balade, a female farmer in Zamfara's Bakalori Irrigators Project, who was growing just two hectares of rice. I went to our farm with the technology support she received on our mobile phones. Hajia Ladi Balade boosted our production 
went to Mecca and supported 23 orphans. My wife, Grace, is here today. Even she will call Haji Aladi Balade the minister's second wife. <laughs> today, Nigeria's fintech entrepreneurs are using technology to deliver digital payment systems with three of Nigeria's fintech, Intersuite, PayPal, and Flutterwave reaching $1 billion mark. Fintechs in Africa raised $1.4 billion in 2020, and in 2021, they raised a whopping $5 billion. Technology, tech, now allows e-health delivery services. At the touch of the button, doctors, pharmacists, and technicians, all connected, deliver real-time medical care. Tech now allows for enhanced security systems, from military reconnaissance, intelligence, to satellite imagery, and remote sensing to track effects of climate change. Artificial intelligence powers systems now power driverless tractors and harvesters for farmers. Drones now deliver blood for transfusion in remote locations, saving time and lives. Cognitive robots now power industrial manufacturing. Your Excellencies and their colleagues and friends, in the very near future, due to machine learning and artificial intelligence, your colleagues in the office or in the industry will not just be Musa, Emeka, Yetunde, or Ada, but they will be called Yekini Jones or Bobo the Robots. They will even wear caps and head ties. Through facial recognition, Yekini the Robot and Bobo the Robot we greet you every morning saying hello Musa, Emeka, Yetunde, and Ada, and you will say hello Yekini, hello Bobo, let's roll. <laughs> Welcome to the world of information, process at the speed of light. Welcome to the power of big data analytics that will transform learning in schools, enhance decision making in academia, research in the public and private sector, banking, and in every sphere of life. Welcome to the power of technology for public transparency and for holding governments accountable. The African Development Bank is preparing the youth of Africa to lead in this new digital economy. We have just provided $170 million to Nigeria to help drive what's called the IDICE initiative that will help to expand the digital industry and grow jobs in creative industries. As the class of 2022, you will help shape the tech future of Nigeria. So be leaders. You have been shaped right here in MENA for export to other parts of Nigeria, Africa, and to the world. Build a new Nigeria, a smart Nigeria, a dynamic Nigeria, a globally competitive Nigeria. It is in your hands. Now go and make it happen. I wish you God's success and God's richest blessing. Congratulations and thank you again. Chancellor, sir, the Federal University of Technology, MENA, on the recommendation of Senate and with the approval of Council, has found Malem Melek Kolokiari, the Group Managing Director, Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation Limited, worthy to be conferred with the honorary degree of Doctor of Engineering, D.N. Honoris Causa of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. I therefore call on the University Orator to present the honorary graduate. University Orator, please.
with all due respect, please may I request that the honorary degree recipient rise and remain standing. I present to you on this momentous occasion, Mile Kolo Kiari, the CEO, GMD of the NMPC Limited, for recognition and decoration with a befitting honor. Marlon Mile Kiari, the 19th Group Managing Director of National, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, and the first CEO and GMD of the NMPC Limited is a gentle and humble individual who was described by the Guardian newspapers as the man with admirers touch for his unrivaled success in boosting Nigeria's crude oil reserves to 40 billion barrels and boosting the nation's oil and gas production. In another report credited to this day newspaper, many of the staff at NMPC Towers consider Malam Kiari as a model servant leader whose actions inspire, motivate, and empower others to produce the best seen to be a round peg in the round hole, this thoroughbred professional of the extractive industry came with over 27 years of practical experience in the oil and gas industry. He worked his way through the entire value chain armed with the requisite certification and expertise in petroleum economics and crude oil and gas trading. In the words of William Penn, an able and a yet humble man is a jewel worth a kingdom. This aptly describes Malam Kari. Born in Borno State, Meiduguri specifically, on the 8th of January 1965, Kiari attended Government Community Secondary School in Bew, Browner State, between, the, between 1977 and 1982, and proceeded to the University of Meiduguri, where he obtained his Bachelor of Science in Geology and Earth Science in 1987. Malam Kiari worked with the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency between 1988 to 1991 as a field geologist and then joined NMPC subsidiary Integrated Data Services Limited, where he worked as a seismic data processing geophysicist between 1991 and 1998 in the data processing department. Unknown to him, destiny was preparing him to play a very significant role in the oil and gas industry of Nigeria. Kiari was employed in NAPIMS as an exploration geophysicist in the production sharing contract, PSC, in 1991. And he became the Abuja operations manager in 2004, and then supervisor, PSC, in 2006, in the crude oil marketing department he was manager of production contracts management between 2007 and 2014. He became the general manager, oil stock management, where he worked until 2015, when he was appointed group general manager. This highly proficient and exemplary public servant was appointed the GMD NMPC 
in 2019. His history in unionism and activism also shaped his view on accountability and trans transparency. He was popularly referred to as Grand Chairman because of his stint as a group chairman of NNPC Pengerson in 1997 and 1999. Through his peacemaking ability, he helped resolve disputes with international oil companies arising from the various interpretation issues with the PSC. And in 1993, he became a member of the team that carried out a review of the 1993 PSC process. In 2007, Kerry won the GMD prize for the overall best performance for NMPC management development program and the GED CS award for the best performance for NMPC, uh, best performance in leadership. Several years later in 2018, he led the OPEX Economic Commission Board charged with reviewing the global oil market. One of the successful initiatives by him include commodity trading initiative aimed at ensuring transparency and accountability in NMPC operations, such that buyers of Nigerian crude know the prices and total sales before sales are made. Also, he led a team that proposed and managed from 2016 till to date the direct sales and direct purchase arrangement of petroleum products. <laughs> Mele Kiari led NMPC to actualize mega projects such as the commissioning of the NMPC Oredo International Gas Handling Facility and numerous others, too much to mention. However, under Carrie's watch, the Petroleum Industry Bill was passed in July 2021 and signed into law. He has allayed fears in some quarters that the BIB bill will not affect the transition to clean energy. The Abiokuta, Kaduna, and Keno, specifically the AKK project, mega pipeline project, whose construction commenced in 2020 is a step in that direction alongside the recently established renewable energy division in the corporation. The GMD has walked his stock. In his drive to ensure transparency and accountability in NMPC, and he has carried global stakeholders along the journey of his leadership. Under his watch, for the first time, the NMPC published the corporation website in the corporation website for all to access and scrutinize in 20, the 2018 and 2019 audited financial statements of the corporation and its subsidiaries registered under the Companies and Allied Act Matters Act 1990 as amended, alongside that of National Petroleum Investment and Management Services to provide clarity to unjoined venture finances. NMPC is reported to be the only national oil company that publishes its financial and operations report monthly. Kiari has also led the corporation to enlist with the Global Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative as an AT supporting company whose mandate places NMPC in the group of over 65 extractive companies, state-owned enterprises that are committed to observed, observing transparency and accountability standards as defined by IT. Additionally, twen in 2012, a controversy-free recruitment exercise for 1,000 young graduate trainees to rejuvenate the corporation's talent mix was successfully completed in the corporation. Of course, Kiari's role in ensuring that the oil and gas industry contributed towards resolving COVID-19 issue in Nigeria cannot be forgotten. Indeed. Honorable, 
Chancellor, sir. Amen. Who has demonstrated such transparency and accountability in achieving feats that are rare in the apex oil and gas industry in Nigeria has attracted the attention of the Council and the Senate of the Federal University of Technology, MINA, in the institution's commitment to giving honor to whom honor is due. It is the unanimous decision of the Council and the Senate of this great institution to confer on Malam Milei Kolo Kiari, the CEO, GMD, NMPC Limited, the degree of Doctor of Engineering, Honoris Causa, Federal University of Technology, MINA. It is therefore my singular honor and privilege to invite you, sir, to effect, to effect the confirmation of the degree. the powers confer on me as the Chancellor in the name of Senate and Council, I confer on you the honorary degree of Doctor of Engineering, Honoris Causa of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. Thank you. Chancellor, sir, the Federal University of Technology, MENA, on the recommendation of Senate and the approval of Council, has found General Absalami Abubakar, GCFR, retired, former head of state of Nigeria, worthy to be conferred with the honorary degree of Doctor of Science, DSC, Honoris Causa, of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. I therefore call on the university orator to present the honorary graduates. University orator, please. With all due respect, please may I request that the honorary degree recipient rise and remain standing. Chancellor, sir, in the presence of these honorable witnesses, I present to you General Abdusalami Al Haji Abu Bakr, retired, DSM, FSS, GSM, 
GCFR, MSS, NSM, RM, SJM, MNI for recognition and the bestowal of a befitting honor. In the words of Andre Moreau, to command is to serve, nothing more, nothing less. This is true of a former head of state and the 12th Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, General Abdusalami Abubakar, retired. A simple, humorous, humble, and honorable personality. He is a national patriot who dedicated 33 years of his life serving his country, Nigeria, as a professional and highly dedicated army officer. Though retired, he has continued to serve not only Nigeria, but also the global community in various selfless capacities. These distinguished national statesmen served as the number one citizen of our great country from 1998 to 1999, after which he gallantly handed over power to an elected civilian government. Destiny was at work in the life of this gallant officer and gentleman. As a young man, he was the parade commander when the 6th and 13th Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, General Lushegun Obasanjo, retired, handed over power to late Alhaji Shehu Shagari in 1979. 20 years later, in 1999, as a military head of state, General Abubakar retired handed over power to the elected civilian government of President Olusegun Obasanjo, GCFR. Born to the family of Abakar Jibrin and Fatih Kande Mohammed on 13th June 1942 in Mina, Niger State, General Abubakar retired, who had no idea of the great role he was destined to play in the history of Nigeria, proceeded to Mina Native Authority Primary School. Then, to Bida, to Government College Bida, right through to being commissioned as second lieutenant to the army when he returned to Nigeria after his stint in Utestin in West Germany. The gallant young cadet officer was commissioned second lieutenant infantry division 1966. He attended several military courses throughout his career among which were the senior infantry courses and so many more down the line. These courses preferred General Walker retired to serve in several converted positions in the Nigerian army from a brigade major, 7th Infantry Brigade, to the Commandant Nigerian War College. Unknown to this man of honor, divine providence began to him as he became the chief of defense staff in December 1993, an appointment that he held till June 1998, when he was sworn in as the head of state and the 12th commander in chief of the armed forces of Nigeria. One year later, he kept his promise to Nigerians and handed over power to, all, to a democratically elected civilian government. In the words of a renowned former chief of staff of the United States Army, late General Douglas MacArthur retired, who was awarded a Medal of Honor for his defense of freedom in the Philippines in 1942. No man is entitled to the blessings of freedom unless he be vigilant in its preservation. True to these words, the international community cannot get enough of the general as appointed started rolling in barely six months into retirement. He has served as a chief mediator and bridge builder in several talks across the globe. General, General Avoca retired, was decorated nationally with Forces Service Star, FSS, 
Meritorious Service Star MSS, Distinguished Service Star DSS, and Grand Commander of the Federal Republic GCFR. Internationally, he was also recognized by Togo, Liberia, France, ECOWAS, United Nations, and on our soil here in Nigeria, he has received honorary degree from several universities. This man of valor and peace is married with children. Indeed. Chancellor, sir. It is for these numerous and overwhelming achievements that this Council and Senate of the Federal University of Technology, MENA, are committed to giving honor to whom honor is due. Both bodies in that regard have scrutinized field of service and contributions to the development of a secure and qualitative society of this great Nigerian and have decided to recognize and honor General Abubakar retired GCFR for these great contributions. It is therefore the unanimous decision of the Council and Senate of this great institution to confer General Absalami Al-Haji Abubakar with a degree of Doctor of Science, Honorary Kosa, Federal University of Technology, MENA. I therefore, it is my singular honor and privilege to invite you, sir, to effect the confirmation. By the powers conferred on me as the Chancellor, in the name of Senate and Council, I confer on you the honorary degree of Doctor of Science, Henry Kausa of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. I now invite Malem Melek Kolokiari, the Group Managing Director, NMPC Limited, to please present the acceptance speech.
you very much, Bismillah uh, Rahim. I don't know where to start from, rather than to say I'm very sorry for coming late. I do not like giving excuses because no excuse is sufficient when you come late for an event. And therefore, Your Excellencies, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm very sorry for coming late. Uh, beyond this, Your Excellencies, uh, I'm profoundly grateful for being given the opportunity by Mr. President to be the Group Managing Director of the NNPC, and thereafter also appointed as the first CEO of, of the NNPC Limited. And no doubt it's a privilege, and I'm not sure I'm the best person he can find around, but he did appoint me, and he just didn't stop at that. He also allowed me to make decisions and own them without any interference. And I may explain how we are able with my team to do the best that we can so that this company that belongs to the 200 million Nigerians serves the 200 million Nigerians. And the only way this company can serve Nigerians is to be accountable to them, to be transparent to them, to let them know what you do on their behalf, and also exert all possibilities to make sure that this company delivers value to our country. Your Excellencies, you may also recall that energy is everything. There is no country that has developed anywhere, and my colleague, uh, traditional, will, will bear me witness, that you cannot have prosperity, you cannot have economic development, except you have energy. So it doesn't, it's not possible. Therefore, this company is the only vehicle today we have that can help us get to the position of economic development and prosperity. As we speak today, there is abject energy poverty. And of course, uh, over 50% of our population do not have access to, to energy. But this can change because we have enormous resources, particularly gas resources, that we can deliver into our country and through the infrastructures that we are trying to build so that ultimately in another three to four years that this country will not be in the situation of energy poverty while recognizing there are issues around energy transition that are going on. But the first challenge we have is to resolve the issues around energy poverty and energy transition that we have to deal with. Your Excellency, now coming back to the protocols, and permit me, Your Excellency, that uh, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the DG of Akure, the Pro Chancellor of the University, His Eminence, and Amrul Muminin, the Sultan of Sokoto, Your Excellency, Governor, and my brother. Then also, former, Vice, former President of the Salami Abubakar, with all respect, Your Excellency. And your other excellencies, the too numerous to mention, but needless to say that uh, it is an honor and privilege standing before you. I am not sure I deserve this, but certainly it is a privilege of time that brought me here and that for the university to recognize that people can make contributions if they are not deterred, if they are not stopped, and also if they are given the best of circumstance to perform. And I have the privilege of having this combination. And I'm grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making it work. Because without the blessings of Allah, you really can do very little. And I'm happy to be here. I will be, continue to be the advocate and ambassador of this university. In every ramification possible, but more importantly for the young people, this is the world of technology today. Things are changing much more rapidly than we can ever imagine. Dr. Adeshina mentioned this. But that things change in such a speed that many of us, including me, I'm 57, even at my age, is difficult to follow. And therefore, for the young people here, the prosperity is yours, the future is yours, but the future is so short that children and young people must learn skills, not just acquire certificates. And once you have skills, the world will need you and you become part of the journey of progress that this country deserves. And I believe that this country will be a great place. Thank you very much. Chancellor, sir.
I now respectfully invite General Absalam Abubakar, GCFR, retired, former head of state of Nigeria, to please present his acceptance speech. Your Excellency, with your permission, I want to adopt the established protocol. But before I do that, I will recognize, with your permission, one or two people. The uh, Chancellor, Kabezi, His Royal Majesty, the uh, Pro-Chancellor, the Vice-Chancellor, the father of us all, although young to be my father, he was still my father, the Sultan of Sokoto. Oh, sorry, the Sultan, I beg your pardon. Um, the Etunupe, and my one and one only Emir of Mina. My fellow awardees, and uh, Mrs. Adeshina, Our Excellency, the, uh, Honorable Justice Fatila Mia Abubakar, the former First Lady, my dear wife, the graduates, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me add to the voices of my other awardees our appreciation to the university for finding it worthy to be so honored. Let me assure you, we will not abuse this pro uh, privilege. We will indeed be ambassadors of this university. For the graduates, like the other speakers have said, the old shall fade away and the young shall grow. So as you grow, you have been, been told the opportunities waiting for you. So be smart, join the race, and take up the challenge. May God help you if, as you step out into the world and into the market. Let me talk a little bit about our country. We are facing a very hard time, security-wise, where the war front is everywhere, and this is a war without any morality. The old and the young are slaughtered without any cause. Indeed, our security forces are overstretched. So it left all of us to join hands in making sure we provide information where possible so that these insurgents could be chased out of our country. I pray that uh, the year 2022 brings in peace, harmony, and security. As we go into the politics of 2022, please may I caution Nigerians. One, the politicians. Please play the game as the rule applies. Avoid making our children, our grandchildren, as uh, vanguards and abusing them and trying to make them do what we know is wrong. And for the youth, please avoid being used to be fronts and be arbitrators of uh, disharmony and uh, violence in the country. To end, I want again to thank uh, the university, the chancellor, for the chancellor, the VC, and the uh, university community for finding a worthy to uh,
be so honored like you did uh, this afternoon. I would like to thank the governor of Niger State and the government of Niger State for always the support I have been receiving in whatever occasions. Your Excellency, thank you very much indeed. Uh, the Sultan, of course, I cannot thank you enough for being here today. I know how much efforts you made to be here. I want to thank you again, uh, being my father and coming to see your son so decorated. I thank you very much indeed. For my supporters, my entourage who came with me, I want to thank you. And for those who uh, escorted my wife also here, I want to single out uh, uh, a lady I always call Commissioner for Life, uh, Mrs. Ahmed Kere. Thank you for always being there. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. May God bless us. May God, may peace reign in our country. Thank you. Chancellor, sir, it is my privilege to respectfully call upon the Governor of Niger State, His Excellency Alaji Abubakar Sanibelu, for his goodwill message. Your Excellency, sir. Your Excellency, the former head of state and his dear wife, Your Eminence, the Sultan, the Chancellor and Pro Chancellor. Uh, honorary our deeds and the graduates, please permit me to stand on the existing protocol already established. First of all, I would like to commend the Vice Chancellor of the FUT MINA, the academic and non academic staff of the university, for a job well done. They have installed discipline and knowledge into the students, and that is the result or outcome of the results we are seeing here today. It is my wish that Allah will continue to guide them and bless this university. Let me also seize this opportunity to congratulate the graduates and their families after months or years of hard work. And finally today, by the grace of Almighty God, they have graduated and they've been awarded their various degrees. And I pray this is the beginning for a better future for them and their entire families. At the same time, I would like to graduate or congratulate the honorary awardees for our award well deserved. Having listened to the profiles of all awardees, we are very sure that this award is given to people of high integrity and is well deserved. At the same time, I would like to congratulate each and every one of us and thank each and every one of us that found it necessary to come to this venue today. This has obviously uh, made the conversation, uh, convocation very colorful. To my friend and brother, the Vice Chancellor, I must congratulate you. The last time I was in this university, a few years back, I can see the difference. The difference is clear. Like you said, this is probably your last convocation. Um, probably my last attendance to any convocation or FUT in my tenure. I wish you and your family well, and I pray that a higher responsibility and assignment awaits you in future. Thank you very much once again, and God bless you all. Chancellor Saad, University of recognizes the presence of Allah Haji Ahmed Abdukadiri, GED, Gas and Power, Hajia Mrs. Aisha Farida Katagum, GED, Corporate Service, Mrs. Muiwa Eyesan, 
GGM, CP and S, Corporate Planning and Strategy. Lawan, Shade, MD, Trading. Ali Zara, MD, NMPC. Al Haji Umar Mala, Al Haji Ibrahim Alasan, Al Haji Ahmad Adama, Barista Fanami, MNI, Honorable Ibrahim Haba Jatau, General Nani. We recognize your presence and we are happy to have you in our university. Chancellor, sir. I have the honor to call upon you to declare the convocation closed. Chancellor, sir. I hereby declare the convocation closed. I now respectfully invite the assembly to rise up for the university anthem to be followed by the national anthem. University anthem, please. The national anthem, please. television you've been watching the live broadcast of the 38th Founders Day and the 38th Convocation Ceremony of the Federal University of Technology MENA. We thank you for staying tuned. However, this is the match we can take on the program. We urge you to stay tuned as we return to our regular programming. My name is Emperor Simon. <laughs>